This is unbelievable. SpaceX's billion-dollar Dragon spacecraft docks with the ISS using a system inspired by a mountain bike suspension. Key components in its development cost just a few hundred dollars each. Yet they prove far more effective than NASA's complex electronic docking system, which ran into tens of millions, solving one of the toughest challenges in any mission to the International Space Station. So, how did SpaceX achieve what NASA thought was impossible? Let's dive into it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Back in the 2000s, when NASA's famous space shuttle was still flying regular missions to the International Space Station, docking was handled by an old but extremely reliable system called the Androgynous Peripheral Assembly System, or APIS. In simple terms, APIS worked like a universal docking port. Both the spacecraft and the station used the same interface, so either side could take the lead during docking. On the ISS, there were three adapters known as pressurized mating adapters, Think of them as built-in plug converters that allowed the shuttle to line up and dock precisely every time. And it worked beautifully. APIS supported more than 135 space shuttle missions without major issues. But in 2011, the shuttle was permanently retired, and NASA faced a new problem. With next-generation spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing's Starliner coming online, NASA thought, we need a docking system that's more modern, safer, and built for the future. So. They designed something ambitious, the International Low Impact Docking System, or ILIDS. ILIDS used electromagnets to gently pull a spacecraft in, reducing impact forces to almost zero. Instead of a hard mechanical contact, docking became more like two vehicles softly meeting, almost kissing, rather than slamming together. On paper, it was flexible, elegant, and the prototypes performed extremely well. Sounds great, right? Well, here's the catch. ILIDS was too complex. It relied on a large number of electronic components, added significant mass, consumed a lot of power, and development costs quickly climbed into the tens of millions of dollars. In the end, NASA realized, yes, it was impressive, but for everyday operations on the ISS, it was simply too expensive and too risky. Recognizing all of that, SpaceX chose not to use ILIDS on Dragon 1. Dragon's first trip to the ISS was a demonstration mission launched on May 22, 2012, and it successfully reached the station on May 25, 2012, but not through autonomous docking. Instead, Dragon flew close to the ISS, and astronauts on board used the Canadarm2 robotic arm to capture the spacecraft, then slowly berth it to the station's docking port. After that flight, SpaceX made a bold decision. Instead of adopting NASA's docking system, they would build a simpler one of their own. This caught many NASA engineers off guard. After all, NASA had spent more than a decade developing its docking architecture, working closely with Boeing. In fact, NASA even offered to provide the system to SpaceX for free. Docking with the ISS is an extremely risky operation, and NASA was confident their system would be safe and reliable. From their perspective, all SpaceX had to do was install it. But outsourcing such a critical part of the Dragon spacecraft was never SpaceX's style. They wanted full independence, and they weren't willing to rely on another agency for something this essential. And that's when Jarrett Matthews entered the picture. At the time, Matthews was a 36-year-old engineer who had spent nearly a decade at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory before joining SpaceX. When he arrived, Elon Musk gave him something rare in aerospace engineering, complete freedom to innovate along with full backing to rethink and upgrade Dragon's docking system. From the very first review, Matthews could see that NASA's docking system was extremely robust and for good reason. It was designed to work with many different spacecraft, but that strength came at a cost. It was far too complex. Matthews believed he could build a docking system tailored specifically for Dragon, one that was simpler, more elegant, and most importantly, didn't add unnecessary mass to the spacecraft. So. He got to work. With the help of an intern, they ordered mountain bike shock absorbers from an online bike shop. The rest of the components came from McMaster Car, basically the industrial version of Home Depot. They even gave their creation a name, McDocker. But why mountain bike shocks? Because from an engineering standpoint, they were almost perfect for docking. Mountain bike suspension is designed to absorb strong impacts, while remaining lightweight, durable, and highly reliable. Exactly what you need for a soft capture during docking, gently absorbing impact energy and handling slight misalignment without damage. And perhaps most importantly, they were cheap. 
Each bike shock spring back then cost around $300 or about $500 for a higher end one. Compared to NASA's multi-million dollar system, the McDocking system used just six springs with a total cost of under $3,000, an absolute bargain. It didn't take long to assemble a working demo. Matthews and the intern showed it to Mark Juncosa, one of Elon Musk's most trusted engineers. To their surprise, Mark was thrilled. He told Matthews, this is exactly the kind of thing Elon will want to see. We should take this to him right now. No meetings, no appointments. They rolled the McDocker straight up to Musk's desk and asked him to take a look. Musk studied it closely, pulling and pushing on the docking ring, rubbing his chin. After just a few minutes, he looked up and said, Yep, let's do this. And that was the beginning of a new Dragon docking system, inspired by something as simple as a bicycle shock. Of course, SpaceX didn't literally use bike parts in the final spacecraft, but the core concept and mechanics stayed the same. The system uses rotary spring dampers, built around custom-designed torsion springs that meet spaceflight standards, paired with eddy current dampers that perform a similar role without relying on complex electronics. The design features six attenuator arms, six rotary spring dampers, evenly spaced around the soft capture ring. Each arm connects through a moment arm, converting linear forces from the hexapod structure into rotational torque, which is then absorbed gradually and smoothly. So, how does it actually work? First, Dragon approaches the ISS from several hundred meters away, using LIDAR, cameras, and onboard sensors to precisely navigate and align itself. As it closes in, Dragon deploys the Soft Capture System, or SCS, a flexible capture ring at the nose of the spacecraft, complete with guide pedals and passive latches. At initial contact, the impact force is absorbed passively by the six rotary spring dampers, energy-absorbing arms inspired by the original mountain bike shock prototype. Using torsion springs and magnetic damping, they gently bleed off kinetic energy without complex electronics. Once the soft capture latches engage with the international docking adapter on the ISS, Dragon performs fine alignment, then retracts the SCS to begin hard capture. Twelve rigid hooks pull the two vehicles together, compressing the pressure seal to form an airtight connection. Finally, the umbilicals are connected, allowing the transfer of power, data, and air. The entire sequence is smooth, elegant, and largely passive, and it worked on the very first try. In 2019, during Crew Dragon Demo 1, SpaceX completed the first ever commercial docking with the ISS using what had started as the humble McDocker. Of course, before its first launch, McDocking went through more than 450 soft capture tests, where the spacecraft gently latched onto simulated docking ports. These rigorous tests proved the system could handle the real-world challenges of docking in space. Its capability wasn't shown just in simulations, but through simple mechanical components, passive soft capture latches and spring-loaded pedals that could absorb position and velocity mismatches during docking without failure. During every docking and undocking, SpaceX and NASA carefully monitored flight telemetry and compared it with simulations to confirm the system was operating within its design limits. This process led to further refinements, improving reliability both before and after the first flight. Since Demo 1, Crew Dragon has continued to deliver excellent docking performance across multiple cargo and crew missions, cementing McDocking's reputation as a robust and highly reliable system in real orbital operations. At most other companies, an idea like that would probably be laughed out of the room. A young engineer trying to improve a NASA design? Why even bother? But SpaceX operates on a first principles philosophy, an approach to innovation that's become popular in Silicon Valley. And that mindset may be one of the key reasons why SpaceX has been so successful today. Of course, for an idea that bold, almost crazy really, skepticism from NASA was inevitable. When Matthews and his boss flew to Houston to meet NASA engineers and present the new design, they were met with stunned looks. He remembers it clearly. You could read everything in their eyes, Matthews recalled. They were thinking, these guys are so naive. They have no idea what kind of mess they're walking into. After all, these were people who had spent two decades studying the problem. You could almost see the thoughts racing through their heads. What exactly do you think you're going to do differently? Matthews knew the stakes were enormous. If he couldn't convince NASA, SpaceX risked losing the highly valuable commercial crew program contract 
and the blame would fall squarely on him. In the months leading up to the contract decision, NASA still wasn't convinced SpaceX could safely carry astronauts to space. In fact, they viewed the new docking system as a potential weak point in SpaceX's proposal. Matthews responded in writing, but it wasn't enough. NASA requested a face-to-face -face meeting to go through the spacecraft design in detail at Kennedy Space Center. Inside a windowless room that still felt frozen in the Apollo era, NASA's contract review panel sat across a long table from SpaceX's engineers. The atmosphere was tense, like a high-pressure PhD defense. Elon Musk opened the meeting by acknowledging the massive transition NASA was making, handing human spaceflight over to private companies after decades of operating the space shuttle themselves. But he reassured the panel that SpaceX would treat that trust with the gravity it deserved. In his familiar, persuasive style, Musk framed the mission as something bigger than just the United States, a step toward humanity becoming a truly spacefaring species. As Musk looked on, Matthews nervously began walking through the docking system in detail. Nearly $3 billion worth of contract value seemed to hang on his presentation. Thankfully, clear charts, solid data, and Matthews' deep belief in the design helped turn the tide. It was a simpler solution, and as he left the room, he felt confident NASA had been convinced. And he was right. In September 2014, NASA announced it would award the contract to restore human spaceflight from U.S. soil to two companies, SpaceX and Boeing, which was using the docking system NASA had traditionally favored. A decade later, the outcome of that decision would speak louder than any presentation ever could. Ironically, it was SpaceX's simple Crew Dragon design, with its soft docking mechanism inspired by off-road bicycle suspension and springs, that went on to become the most trusted way to carry astronauts to the ISS today.